In the early 18th century, the Qing dynasty sent troops to Tibet after the Jungars invaded, but then effectively turned Tibet into a protectorate. However, the Dalai Lama and Panchen Lama would continue to govern over all spiritual and some political matters. Yet the Qing dynasty appointed Ambans, or government officials, to maintain their authority in the region. However, during the 19th century, the Chinese were forcibly opened up, suffered numerous rebellions, and central authority began to break down. Plus, as Britain cemented their control in India and the Russias in next central Asia, the two powers tried to maintain a balance of power in Asia during the Great Game. So Afghanistan was made a buffer state in the west, but the British feared Russian encroachment into Tibet in the east. This was especially true as the British in India had encountered problems with Tibet, like in the 1880s when Tibet sent troops into Sikkim, and the British responded by launching the Sikkim expedition. And even though the Chinese signed border treaties with the British, the Tibetans refused to allow the British entry. Meanwhile, the 13th Dalai Lama had welcomed Agvan Dorzhiev, a Russian-born Buddhist, into Tibet. And Dorzhiev claimed that Tsar Nicholas was the emanation of the White Tara and would offer the Tibetans protection. So, when he travelled to Russia in 1901, the British believed that the Russians would move into Tibet. So, Lord Curzon, the Viceroy of India, approached the Chinese to enter into negotiations. The Chinese agreed, but the Dalai Lama refused. So, in 1903, without authorization from London, the Tibet Frontier Commission, led by Francis' young husband, headed into Tibet. Officially, it was to resolve border disputes in Sikkim and establish diplomatic relations. But the diplomats entered Sikkim that July with around 3,000 soldiers. However, they could not provoke an aggressive response from the Tibetans. So, after months of waiting, they found a flimsy justification to enter Tibet itself in December. They claimed that the Tibetans were hostile when they herded away Nepalese yaks that crossed the border. So, the British moved on to Kampa Jong, but no Tibetans confronted them initially. But in March 1904, near Lake Banso, they encountered Tibetan soldiers blocking the road, carrying very antiquated rifles. A brawl ensued and shots were fired and the Tibetans were massacred by the British Maxim guns. Yet, even though the British press criticised the massacre, the government kept silent on the issue. So, the mission advanced onto Red Idol Gorge, where the Gurkha troops scaled the hillside and drove back the defenders in early April. And then they entered Gyangsi unopposed, but decided to divide their forces. James MacDonald took troops to secure the supply lines, while some waited in Gyangsi, and others were sent to defeat the Tibetans gathering at Karo La in early May. But those who remained in Gyansi were besieged by Tibetans after they retook the Gyansi Jung, or fortress. Plus, for launching such unjustified attacks, young husband was demoted, and when MacDonald returned to Gyansi, he took command in June. And with reinforcements, he captured the Jung in early July after heavy bombardment, and it was subsequently looted. After this defeat, the Dalai Lama fled to Urga in Outer Mongolia, while the Tibetans adopted a policy of scorched earth. Tibetan delegates finally met with the British, but a young husband was back in control, and he would only agree to talk in Lhasa, which they reached on the 3rd of August. There, the British forced the regents to sign the Treaty of Lhasa, which allowed British merchants to trade in some regions, and banned Tibet from forming diplomatic relations with foreign powers. So, Tibet essentially became a British protectorate, however, the large indemnity that they were forced to pay was far too large for such a poor nation. So, Chumbi Valley was ceded to the British until the Tibetans could raise the money. This also increased anti-Western sentiment within Tibet, and this was made worse when the Qing dynasty allowed French missionaries to operate in the region. So, Tibetan lamas rose up just a year later, but they were promptly crushed by Qing troops. And the British government essentially reversed the Treaty of Lhasa by signing the Anglo-Chinese Convention of 1906. In that, the British agreed not to interfere in Tibet if the Chinese prevented other foreign powers from interfering as well. Then the Chinese paid off the debt, so the British withdrew from Chumbi Valley, meaning the expedition achieved very little. Plus, in 1910, the Qing government launched an expedition into Tibet to oust the Dalai Lama and establish direct control. However, the Republican revolutions a year later ended Chinese rule of the region, and Tibet began to become more independent, while China descended into the warlord period. 